Good morning, everyone. It's pretty early, like eight in the morning on a Sunday. Well, I'm gonna be putting together something in the crock pot for our dinner. Now our dinner is going to be a little bit earlier, but I'm making some chili and some cornbread. Wanna see how I do it? Like I said, it is eight in the morning, so I'm also making some breakfast. We've been watching church on television called Church Conference, and we've been, like, we'll watch it in two hour um, increments. So there's a nine o'clock in the morning session and then a one o'clock for Pacific Standard Time. But you guys, it's been so good to watch. And if you haven't watched some before and, you, and you're interested to see what what I've been watching, you can go to the church of Jesus Christ.org and just watch them again. So I need to get breakfast going. So I thought I'd make some really easy breakfast biscuits and then I'll get going on the chili. But first thing I'm gonna need to do is heat through two pounds of ground beef. So that's two pounds of ground beef. I like to use the lean 93.7 because then I don't have to rinse it out. So. I just use that, but it's two pounds. And so I think I might need a bigger pan. What do you say? I think I do. So I'm using my handy dandy meat masher from viewer uh, Danny Lynn. I love this thing. I think she got it at Walmart. So if you're interested. Okay, so this is gonna go, after it's cooked, we're gonna get it into the crock pot. What do you guys call this? I call it a crock pot. It says the crock pot on mine. But do you call it a slow cooker? I'm just so curious because when you Google recipes for crock pots versus uh, slow cookers, there are a variety of different ones. So I was just curious. So we're gonna get our meat in here and then we're gonna need some sauces. So you'll just need a 15 ounce can of sauce and then um, some diced tomatoes. It's like 28 ounces. I am gonna link the recipe below so that you can just go right to it. But look at you guys, I didn't realize I had these chili ready tomatoes. So I'm gonna use that and then one can of my petite diced tomatoes. So I'll put those all into the can or into the pot. But did you know that there's another way? Tell me if you open your cans like this where you put it up and down because I just learned that if you turn it sideways like in this, you get such a cleaner cut. You guys, it like blew my mind away. I was um, Betty, no Betsy, from Betty's Beds, she, I follow her on Instagram, and she showed this, I was like, what? And so I put it on my Instagram when I did it, and she commented, I thought that was so fun. So, you go, look at how clean that just came off. Boom, so we're just gonna pour all of these sauces in, and then we're gonna get some seasonings in, and then we're gonna make sure this is going while we're watching conference. All right, so I have all my sauces here and I'm gonna put in about a teaspoon, oh, half a teaspoon of pepper. Now those those uh, tomatoes, I probably, this is what I have for my pepper. I need to go get some more. Um, those tomatoes already had like a, a spicy kick to them. So I think that's what it means, that it means that it's chili, chili ready. So I thought that was kind of cool. So we're also going to do some salt, just a half a teaspoon. And then we're going to do my favorite, it's my favorite smell, is cumin with like Mexican type foods. This is so good. So one and a half teaspoons of cumin. Then we're doing some more, um, some more chili powder. So I'm gonna do, it says two tablespoons, but because the, the the tomatoes were already prepped, I'm gonna, or one of those cans were already prepped, I'm only gonna do about one and three quarters-ish. Um, it also calls, like, we should be cooking a large onion with this, but you know, if you know me, we'll just do some dehydrated ones. We're gonna need some garlic. We'll need um, two cloves. So if you're buying it from the store, it's it's just two, one teaspoon. And then we're just gonna add our meat to that. So we're gonna give this a little good stir with all of those yumminess in there. And then we're just gonna add our meat 
and that's it you guys we're gonna put a lid on this i'm gonna mix it through put a lid on it and cook it on low for six to eight hours now if you like beans which my family does not and i'll tell you i'll show you a secret in a little while um what you could add your can of beans in here as well wow this is already smelling so good so where the the long-term crock pot kind of thing is just going to make it like really soft so it's going to be good so we're at about half time with church right now uh so for a couple hours we can have lunch or whatever but we're going to save our big dinner or big meal for after the next session which will be almost dinner time about three o'clock our time so this has been going for a couple hours now let's take a look Ooh, it smells so good look at all of that give it a little stir in there it smells delicious i can't wait so this is going to go for probably a few to about four more hours or so and then it'll be dinner time so to that, I will add um, some beans just in my bowl because I'm the only one that really likes beans. So let me show you what I've done. A couple weeks ago, I made a crock pot full of beans and then I sectioned them into little baggies so that when I'm feeling hungry or I'm planning a, a lunch, I could take out one is rice and one is beans because that's like one of my favorite things to eat. Let me know if you eat beans and rice together. Do you put some cheese on it, some salsa? I just like it plain. So that's how I have it here. So I'll be adding these beans to my chili in the bowl while the guys just like it with the meat. So now I'm gonna make a yummy, yummy cornbread that involves some yellow cake mix, you guys. So you know it's gonna be nice and sweet. And all you need is a box of Jiffy, the Jiffy small box of uh, the cornbread mix, but I don't have that. <laughs> so this is what you can do instead if you don't have a Jiffy box. Luckily, I had the ingredients in my pantry, so I'm just gonna show you how to make your own homemade. Now this recipe, I don't have a link to, but I will put it in the description box below. So first thing we're going to do is add 2 thirds cup of flour. We're gonna use a half of a cup of cornmeal. We're gonna do a third of a cup of just sugar. We're gonna do a tablespoon of baking powder. A half of a teaspoon of salt. Where's my salt? Half a teaspoon of salt. And then two tablespoons of oil. And then we're just going to mix that, you guys. That's our jiffy. So to that, there would be like eggs and milk, and then it would just be following the same directions as the jiffy box. But to this, we're going to be adding the cake mix, you guys. And I'm super excited for that. And then we're going to add some milk and eggs as well. So let me bring you closer now, now that I have my jiffy. All right, you guys, so we're going to add just a box of yellow cake mix to this. So this is gonna be one of those like super like sweet, like it almost tastes like cake cornbread, uh, which is my favorite. <laughs> Ezra asked me to put some uh, corn in it as well. So I'll be thinking about that pretty quick here. We just like having cornbread with corn in it. Let me know in the comments if you guys do as well. So to this, we're going to add five tablespoons of butter, a third of a cup of milk, we're going to do a cup of water. And then we're gonna be adding four eggs to this. And that's it, you guys. We're just gonna mix it up. Let me get those eggs in there. All right, I got my four eggs in, and all I'm doing is mixing this through. So it's gonna be nice and thick, you guys, but it's gonna be like a cake mix, so to say. I am gonna add a little bit of frozen corn to this, just because it's more like corn bread. So it'll be sweetened corn bread, obviously. So it'll, it'll cook in a nine by 13, so I've greased that pan already. 
And we're just gonna bake it at 350 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. And I can already tell you, you guys, it's smelling really good, kind of like cake mix. Let me go get some corn. Okay, I just, I had a little bit of frozen corn, so I'll just add the rest of that. And just get that in the mix, you guys. I think I'm ready to put this into the, the dish, the baking dish right now. Okay, let's get this in the oven. I can't wait to try this. Can't wait. I mean, I'm gonna have to have a little taste before dinner, right? It just came out. Look at that, you guys. So the original recipe says 20 to 25 minutes, and that was a lie. <laughs> this was closer to 40 minutes, and you just kind of have to keep checking it. So my ovens, I don't, I feel like they're like right on time, so to say, right temperature and everything. So if your oven goes a little bit warmer, cooks a little bit faster, so obviously it's gonna take less than 40 minutes. But definitely just leave, just check it every five minutes after 25 minutes for sure. Mm, I can't wait for it to cool and so I can try it. Okay, I'm gonna try some of this, cause you know, I have to. That's good. It almost just tastes like cake but it's so good. I can taste that it's got cornbread in it too. Ooh. <laughs> Ezra wanted to try it as well. What do you think, bud? Tastes like cake, huh? But it does have like that taste of cornbread to it too. I have even put um, corn in it for you. Oh, perfect. Have you gotten to some? Mm. Now we'll just wait for dinner and dish it all up. So, ooh, can't wait. That meal was delicious and you guys, so easy to do. I really hope that you'll try this one. Thanks so much for stopping by the channel today. Give the video a thumbs up and let me know if you have a family chili recipe because I think I need to know that one too. Now it's time to clean up, but stick around rollers. You just never know what I'll be rolling out next. Bye everyone.